It's serious. And silly. Seriously. Silly, but serious. But silly. It's Scott and Sheila. Ooh, and Ooh. these three guys. <laughs> All right, welcome to episode 4,312 of <laughs> Serious and Silly with Scott and Sheila. Um, you know, we just keep landing the big guests. Uh, Sheila, we had a, a famous alumna, alumna on mm -hmm. a couple of ago, uh, Vanessa Grimaldi. You guys might have heard of her. Today, we have an alumni, in fact, three of them on our show. Uh, if they are uh, Nicholas Revernack, uh, Antonio Pierfelice, and Klingenberg. Um, yes, uh, three of our alumni. They're sport marketing and management alumni, but they're also game staff alumni and so much more. And we're going to find out all about them today. So welcome, guys. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for having us. us. Yeah. What's going on, guys? Very excited to have you. <laughs> awesome. Um, so basically today uh, we're going to ask you guys a few questions and then uh, we're going to, you know, have some fun. So uh, yeah, let's say, uh, you know, let's get going. Um, so basically we've heard a lot about the sport marketing and management program. Uh, there's a lot of truth about the program. There's a lot of, uh, you know, fiction, fake news about the program. So why don't you guys tell us... Uh, what made you go into the program and uh, stuff like that? <laughs> Very professional here. <laughs> Who, who's, who's going first? Uh, Nick, oh, you go oh. first. Okay, right. perfect. So um, the way I found out about the program was probably a little bit different from, from Antonio and Trevor, but I actually found out about this when I was in secondary three when my brother was actually going on siege at first. So my mom pointed out in the brochure, hey, you know, you like sports, check out the sport marketing and management program. So I went to the open house, had a look, and I'm like, you know, if I could mix my passion for sports with, you know, with business, I, I think I'd be very good at that, and I think I'd like it. So once I got into, into school, I got to say, the program was probably the best three years of my life. I met some great friends, such as Antonio and Trevor. I got, got to learn about a lot about the sports industry from a business standpoint, not only from the fan standpoint. So I, I just wanted to be a really great three years. Some people kind of thought as you know, it's, it's kind of a lesser of a, than a business commerce program that most students go to, but it's not the case at all. I, I find it to be essentially the equivalent of any commerce program, just like with the focus on sports. So if you really do like sports and you really have a passion for it, I mean, just by all means go for it. it it's a great program. You, you get to learn a lot about the, the soft skills, like the interviewing, the networking that maybe you wouldn't get in any other business commerce program. So I'm saying if, if any of you guys out there are, are really passionate about sports and you want to mix it with the love of business, it's a, it's a great program for you. Antonio. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> my understanding of, of what the program was didn't really come to be until I was actually in it. Um, I remember when, back when I was in secondary five, um, you know, we had people coming, doing open houses and stuff like that. And I actually never attended the open house for any of the schools except for Dawson. And the only reason why I'd went to the one with Dawson is because I went with my cousin. Um, and I'd never heard of Champlain or anything along those lines, never heard of the program. And I remember meeting with my guidance counselor back in high school. And I said, look, these are my interests. What can I do with this? And I remember I was very fixated on marketing. Um, and, you know, my main focus was maybe going to Dawson because at the time, you know, there was interest in maybe playing for the hockey team there and stuff like that. And he said, look, said, you seem like you're very oriented around sports and um, like you would like to work in sports when you're older. He said, there's this program called Sport Marketing and Management at Chanon Plain where you'll get the exact same degree as if you go to regular marketing at Dawson, but for three years, you get to study sports every day. And I think that's really what sold me because I said, look, would I rather learn all of these marketing tips and classes and along with management, but have that centered around sports and do it in sports related topics and for me that's what sold me like i said i never actually went to the open house at champlain but once you get here um you know it's not a big school everybody knows everybody and like there's just no way of actually getting lost like whether <laughs> whether whether you've been to an open house you've been here like 17 times or it's your first time in the school it's very very simple to get around so um like nick said and i'm sure trevor's gonna say the same thing for me it was the best three years of my life i really enjoyed the program um, but yeah, it, it really started out of nothing. I, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. 
and then, you know, speaking to a guidance counselor um, in high school really, you know, pointed me in this direction. All right. And we saved the best for last. Trevor. We usually say. Um, <laughs> so for me, I didn't go to uh, college directly out of high school uh, due to unforese unforeseen circumstances. Um, but I did go attend the open house that year, uh, Champlain. And I was, I wasn't sold by it, by a sport marketing program uh, from the person that was uh, selling it, which the name will remain uh, undisclosed. But, um, but yeah, so I was still like the year after, I was like, there's something about it that's telling me to come back. So year after, came back, different person, sold it to me. And um, yeah, so going into it, I had like, I had expectations that it was a combination of money and sports, which I mean, who doesn't love money and sports? personally as a passion someone who's passionate about sports it's great perfect combination but there's it's not entirely true but it's not entirely false as well there's still um concepts around it that uh we learn a lot about and it just made it really enjoyable and there's so many components about the industry that you're just completely unaware of like now when you go to like any sports events professional sports events or even watching on tv you'll see something it'll be like oh they did it this way they did it that way so you see I, I'm not sure if Nick mentioned it before, but you see things on a diff from a different perspective now, which is which is cool. It, get, it keeps it entertaining, and especially going to games with uh, Nick and Antonio, it's like we're all constantly pointing it out to each other, and then oh yeah, this and this and this and this. So it's it's cool. It's fun to watch, and uh, no, I really enjoyed my my time at Champlain. Like Antonio said, by far best three years of my life. Like when me and Sheila see a web series now, we have such a high production team. We're like, oh my god, the <laughs> The third producer must be telling them in their ear uh, to move on to the next question, which is what we're going to do now. <laughs> nice. Scotty, very smooth. <laughs> One transition done. A minor yeah, there you go. at Concordia University. Uh, so, yeah, I guess one of the, uh, the things is, like you guys say, people who go into sport marketing kind of start off thinking that they're going to do uh, – something and one of the great things about you having you three guys is you've all moved into different areas uh so if you guys want to tell us uh what you're up to now and uh you know how sport marketing uh, kind of got you where you needed to be let's start with trevor oh boy okay wasn't ready for that but um yeah so <laughs> as scott mentioned we're on different paths now um not this, not bad at all uh so i'm in phys ed at mcgill university i'm in my third year and it's been three years already um so i love the program but i just there's something about it that i just didn't feel super content of pursuing per se um but it was definitely skills that i've learned in it will help me in the future for sure like for example if i'm in a school setting how to manage a large event how to fundraise That's, these are all things that are going to come up sponsorship i mean less likely but still on a large scale event if i want to do it for my personal use that's 100 percent going to come up and then most of all, sport, what sport marketing prepared me for is um, helped me develop my public speaking skills by far. So mm -hmm. as a teacher, as you know, you're in front of the class, all eyes on you. So public speaking was definitely something that uh, I developed from high school, being that, that shy kid that didn't want to speak much versus now it's like, I mean, sometimes you could try and get me to shut up, but <laughs> once you're passionate, you're passionate, you're just going for it. So uh, no, definitely like some of the skills most of the skills that i've learned will definitely be intertwined or incorporated in my career at some point i think sheila is in charge of the uh, mute button if need be uh, oh boy <laughs> mr <laughs> oh, <I'm not. laughs> mr pier felice yeah um so i'm in my second year now i'm completing my bachelor um in leisure and recreation sciences and again leaving college wasn't too sure what I wanted to do it's kind of been like the theme with me after I leave you know one place I don't really know what I'm gonna end up doing I kind of just figure it out um and you know I know a lot of people usually follow the international business or the management or the marketing you know route after they're done um had Champlain that's where a lot of students go they go to JMSB um for me I felt like I gained so much knowledge actually in sport marketing, about marketing, about management. Like Trevor said, there's so much stuff that, that we did learn, how to run big events, fundraising, sponsorship, all that kind of stuff that I said, do I really want to go spend another three to four years doing that when I have the base knowledge that I already have? And if I really want to, I can take classes as electives in university. 
So I chose leisure simply out of the fact that I spoke to about three or four people before leaving college. And I said, listen, you have jobs that are really cool to me. So for instance, the first person I spoke to was you, Scott. I said, look, I would love to know what you studied when you went to university um, and what you kind of did to get to what you're doing right now. I remember speaking to Vince Amato, the athletic director at Champlain. I spoke to Dean Howie, the you know head of student services. I spoke to these kind of people to see what they're doing because those are jobs that I would be really interested in doing one day. And that kind of led me to leisure where people seem to always mention it. And, you know, the thing I'll say about leisure is that it, it's under the same branch as human relations, as therapeutic recreation. So, and this is a field where you really learn to work with people, which is something I love to do. Um, and again, like, you know, you may be learning about leisure, but, but all the transferable skills that you get with these sort of programs just help you. And as I mentioned, I've taken marketing electives, I've taken management electives because I am still interested in those classes, but I wouldn't necessarily pursue a whole bachelor degree in that. Um, and the one thing I've been doing is, although leisure, we don't speak about sports that often, um, I've really been, you know, taking things and relating it to sports because that's ultimately the field that I want to stay in moving forward. Yes. So Antonio has followed the route of myself, Sheila, Dean, and uh, Vince, and uh, Trivis has uh, followed the route of uh, Dave Person. So good luck with that, Trevor. And on to Nick. <laughs> okay. So uh, <laughs> um, I followed, I guess, the more prototypical path that most students take. So they go from sport marketing or the business program to JMSB. So seeing as I already did, let's say, the, the sport marketing program has a major focus on the management and marketing aspects, so like the sponsorships, the event running, uh, the promotions, so stuff like that would, uh, didn't interest me. But I thought when I go to university, I thought that maybe I should diversify myself a little bit and keep my doors a little bit more open, which is how I got into finance. So right now I'm doing a finance co-op with the minor in real estate. So I thought that, okay, when I go into finance, it's something that we didn't touch upon too much in the sport marketing management program, albeit we had a few classes, but it wasn't the major focus. So I thought it's a little bit more of a technical program. Uh, you, you need a little bit more of a deeper knowledge and understanding to be able to, to, to be able to work with it. So I went into that and I, I told myself, okay, I can go into finance. I'll have a broad business background, one from the general electives or the general business electives that we take in university. I'll have my finance major and I'll have everything that I also learned uh, in CJEP from school marketing and management. So what I did for, for myself or what I told myself was, okay, I, I have the business background, have the business major from university. I can go into um, any general business that I want to work in, whether it be in sports or outside of sports. In this case, perhaps real estate. I started taking my mind of the semester and I absolutely love it. So I want to keep my doors open and say, okay, if I want to work in business, I can work in business, but I also have that sports background from CJEP and that marketing background that would leave doors open in case I would want to, let's say, go back to that or if I find a job in, in that during, especially these tough times, I've heard lots of things about the job market. So keeping myself diversified was great so that I don't close too many doors too quickly so that I'm always able to try to find something that I would really enjoy doing in life. And sport marketing and management, again, brought me that background that allowed me to diversify once I got into, into university. That is awesome. Well, it sounds like that program is pretty cool, uh, considering that you guys have went into three different, um, you know, avenues with it. So good job, sports marketing and management. Um, and Scott, why are you muted? <laughs> you kept going off. It was like a snail chain that kept going, ba-ding, ba-ding. <laughs> it's okay. Last time we, we shared a screen and there was something that came up and we had to like ask Vince, we're like, we don't edit normally, but we're like, Vince, you have to edit this out because we can see oh boy. some information there that Scotty. we should see. Had to be Scott. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so thanks for sharing that. Um, another thing that I would uh, ask you to share mm -hmm. is um, based on your work experience here at Champlain or volunteer experience, um, did you guys ever encounter any cool opportunities that you would like to share? Uh, whether it's because you were part of the program or part of um, the game staff? Um, so if you can share some of that. Who's kicking this one off? Antonio, go I'll, I'll go first. first. Yeah, yeah, I'll go yeah, first. Go first. Yeah, go first. Um, <laughs> all right. So for me personally, 
I would I would make the link between the Cavaliers game staff and the work we did there, which is event setup and takedown. And obviously we do in-game tasks as well when we're working at the sports, but main focus is on setup and takedown. I'll relate that to a opportunity that I got last year, actually, and I ended up working this job for two months. I got the opportunity to go um, tour across Ontario for two months with Bauer in the NHL for a program called The First Shift. <clears throat> and essentially what I was doing was running welcome events where the main part of it was event setup and takedown. So mm -hmm. simple tasks like, you know, setting up a table or setting up a tent or banners. It's all stuff that we've done with the game staff that, you know, it was just second nature to me. Once we got, once we got on tour, I understand we were a group of five people, which is very similar to what we do with the game staff. Normally when we're setting up, we're between, you know, six and 10 people, depending on the day, um, you know, from setups that would take us, two hours maybe on the first week of tour by the end of tour we would do it in 35 to 40 minutes because it, it just got even easier for us right um so i think that would be the best connection that i can make out of the work i've done there and then obviously the social aspect like trevor mentioned and this is more for um the sport marketing program but also with the game staff i remember coming out of high school i was not able to speak in front of classes or people and stuff like that which is crazy to say now that we're doing this um but the amount of presentations and the amount of like social interactions that we've had while we were at Champlain and still now, I think really helped us going forward, like professionally and working in companies. Um, you know, just, I feel like public speaking is one of the most important skills that you can have. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, sport marketing out of all things that it did, I think that's the one thing that it prepared us for the most. So I think that would be my connection out of like what I got from the game staff and how um, it translated into a future opportunity that I got. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And gentlemen, Trevor or Nick, it's up to you guys. I'll, I'll go for it. Um, okay. <laughs> so there's, there's a lot that came up um, at Champlain, but the one that I think takes the cake was working with a uh, Deno Nations Cup, which is uh, a World Cup f uh, of soccer for 12 year olds. And um, so every year they go to a different country and there's countries from Europe, from Africa, from Asia, South America. It's, it's literally a, a World Cup. And that year I was able to go to uh, New York, which I know it's like it's right across the border. But cool. the, what, what came out of that is the year after, unfortunately, I had to decline because of school. But I was offered to go to Spain, which was like I couldn't I was like. As much as I'd love to, like, I can't do this because of school. But the fact that there's those opportunities around that you still know is extremely, extremely rewarding in the end. And it just goes without saying that with your hard work and dedication, you will be recognized at some point. There's going to be some, at some point in your life, whether it's uh, short term or long term, your hard work and dedication will be recognized by someone and will push you to be the better person you could be. Beautiful. Very true. Um, I mean, there are lots of things that, that kind of came from SMM and GameStop that, that, that led to like future work. So there are a few. So, so one is, well, through Trevor, because I met Trevor uh, so quickly in the program, he was able to help me get a job with the Alouettes, which was eventually doing GameStop, but let's say on a, on a much larger scale than what we do at Champlain. Uh, we were both also able to do uh, volunteer at the World Juniors when they were here in 2017, which was a fantastic experience. Putting in all those hours to, to make such a tournament become so successful is so great. But also, I would think the best thing that came out of it was just doing, doing running the charity ball hockey tournament that we had to do for our program. So for those that don't know, um, every year in your third year, uh, sport marketing students uh, form groups and they basically have to run a charity sports tournament for... Uh, to raise funds for the Montreal Canadian Children's Foundation. So I was with uh, in a group with Antonio and Trevor and uh, a few other guys. We ended up raising just over $5,000, I think, yeah. which, was, which was one of the highest in the program's history. So we, we put in a lot of work, we put in a lot of effort to get sponsors, to promote the tournament, get teams, uh, get some raffles, sell raffle tickets, all that kind of stuff. And what that's led is to just, it's, it, it helps it helped to get you that interview much quicker for, for jobs. Often enough, because I'm in the co-op program, so I've had to, to send out my CV everywhere to be able to find that internship uh, for school. And a lot of the time, when, when I get into the interview, they say, oh, you, you ran a charity sports tournament. Oh, you were able to raise that much money for such a well-known foundation. 
So I, I feel like just that experience alone sets yourself apart from everybody else that's out there. Like, again, whether, whether you're in, in business or whether you're, you're doing leisure like Antonio, just, just, the, just the fact that, that you see that on a CV, it just, just makes you so much different from everyone else because they won't, they won't have that opportunity available to them. They're going to have to go look for it, whereas we had it right in our hands by going into this program. And I, I think that that was something that really, really helped us set ourselves apart uh, to our other, other people competing, competing with us to get some jobs. Wow. Oh my goodness. First of all, you guys are awesome. I just, everything that the three of you have said, such wise words, uh, fantastic, honestly. Um, but you guys, I obviously worked super close with Scott, right? In your Poor time you. here at Shelton. Every day. We're with him every, every day. day. Every day. <laughs> we all started out so nicely. I was just like, come on guys, just come and, you know, <laughs> Lord us 500 in. hours later. <laughs> every day um so as you all know uh, scott is like a super nice nice guy right he's so sweet he's like he'll, he's just great he's fantastic but i really want to get like deep in here and i want to know like have you ever seen scott like be upset in like in any way if you tell them i'll be so angry <laughs> could i could i start yeah. okay yes, so, in, so all honesty, in all honesty i cannot say that i have however However, there's this one moment which I'm sure either Nick and, uh, Nick and or Antonio will cover um, that I just feel like I was always there, a part of it, when they tell the story. So uh, I know if he gets mad for a reason, it's not just because there's a tent that blew over the fence at Nationals. But that's a story for another day. But there's actually a major reason. So I'll leave the floor to Nick or Antonio to, uh, to cap it off. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I was Building actually. The suspense. I'm excited. <clears throat> oh, okay. I was. I was actually there. The only time I've ever seen Scott get mad, and I think I was the only one who was there out of the three of us. And I think the main reason why he was angry that night is because we didn't have like a full staff, and anything that could have went wrong did go wrong that night. I remember it was a football game, probably in my second year, where we had a scoreboard malfunction. Um, we lost our two stats guys at one point, like at half halftime of the game they just disappeared and then they showed up like maybe seven minutes into the second half um then when it came time to actually doing the stats at the end everything was like wrong it was just one of those nights where like normally all of this is under control and i remember like we, we sat down in vince's office <laughs> scott was so like he wasn't like letting it out but you can just see how like frustrated he was i i remember i've always told this story to nick and trevor but it was just because yeah, i wasn't for, there yeah, like for me, I was the one taking the heat there, right? Because I was like, let's say the only one that was there. And I think Rob was there too, probably. But yeah, it was just, for me, it was uncharted territories. Like you said, we never see Scott angry. So for me, I was like, all right, how do we, how do we deal with this? Like, <laughs> oh man, that was, that, yeah, that was, that was a fun day. paid for that show. I feel like this is Sheila's payback for the episode where I showed her ID card. Uh, you're gonna, gonna bring that up before. again. You're gonna bring it up again. Uh. <laughs> but did he? Did he like seen it? Uh, Tune into the episode of Serious and Silly with Scott and Sheila. With Scott and Sheila. Horrible, horrible. So did he explode? Um, did like did Scott explode? Did he just keep it in, keep it in, and yeah. I want to know. I, I he didn't explode in front of me. It was just more one of those things where like we had like a civil chat about everything that went wrong. And by civil, I mean the voice was escalating more and more every time we spoke about something. But, <laughs> like, even when Scott's mad, it's not like when most people are mad. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? It's just, we were, we were, discussion, we were discussing how it, it, just, it was just one of those nights. But we've had so many of those situations where, like, so many things just go wrong. But, like, we normally damage control it to the best of our abilities, obviously. It was just one of those, it, like, that night, it was just... There was no sound. Chaos. It was just, it when just it rains, it pours. Literally. <laughs> but enough Thank about you. me, guys. <laughs> I mean, you know. Oh, Nick still got to go. Um, I don't we're know. Now going to learn about wait, you. wait, Scotty, Scotty. Nick, do you have any stories of Scott he, exploding? He doesn't, he doesn't get mad. He just, there are times he gets irritated. <laughs> the, mo the most often is during open gym. Guys, no boots on the court. <laughs> that, 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 that's like the most I think I've ever seen Scott get mad. Mm -hmm. okay and that's then the, that's the yeah. only time i could think of and then it got it got to the point where i feel like he got so irritated that he's like antonio how about you wash the gym for two hours every wednesday 
So yeah, yeah I did that. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even when uh, when a student broke his rib during a uh, a pickup kind of like uh, ultimate frisbee, he was so calm and collected. He didn't react at all. Didn't tell <laughs> he anybody about, about it for like, for like five years later, but <laughs> tell him to walk it off. <laughs> walk it off. I didn't tell anybody about it for like at least uh, seven minutes and then just constantly <laughs> complained about it for like six weeks. Yeah. And yeah. today. <laughs> All right. Enough about me. I mean, uh, especially if we're not talking nice things. <laughs> um, so, guys, we're going to learn about a little bit about you uh, in a game we call, Sheila, Do You Know Who You Know? Do you know who you know? Or, so guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to present you some random facts that you guys have given me. And uh, you guys who know each other pretty well, we're going to find out. Do you know who you know? Sheila? Let's do it. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> what? Okay, this is crazy. He has never chewed gum or had a soft drink in his life. That's Nick. That's 100% Nick. I've never no. seen the guy chew no. gum <laughs> or have a soft drink. I don't chew gum, that's true. I don't chew gum, but that's not me. That's Trevor. Trevor? That, I, will that vouch, Trevor. I will vouch for that being Nick. <laughs> that's I'm, Nick? I'm, I'm pretty sure that's Nick. 100%. Because Nick. I know that every that's time we've true. gone, every time we go to Subway, he doesn't get soft drinks. Exactly. He doesn't exactly. get soft drinks every oh, time wait, we go wait, to Subway. Wait, wait. Mm. No, it's not wait, true. Wait, does iced tea can count as a soft drink? I... I I'm not no, sure. No, that's that's Trevor because uh, I know that the only thing that Trevor drinks is water. That's all he drinks. That's so Nick. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Okay, so Vert. Okay, I've so also we're gonna never do. Seen Trevor chew gum. Okay, we're gonna do. So Trevor, you're saying Nick. Nick, you're saying I, Trevor. I'm saying, Nick. I'm saying Trevor. <laughs> Last good, minute good, change. Good change. Good change. Yeah. Good change. Good good change. Trevor. All right. So who was it? Trevor. That's right. Good job, guys. Good job. I, was, I thought I had you going, Antonio. I thought I was gonna get away with that <laughs> yeah. one. So close. That's a good one. I always feel confidence. I always clutch. This person uh, has put country music in his top three favorite types of music. Mm. Ooh, Ooh. I'd go with Nick. I'd go with Nick Simple that because sounds I, like me. I would put you because of all those like times you asked me to play Country Roads in the car. Yes. Oh, that's a good song. <laughs> right? Carry it one song. day. But anyways, um, I mean, I guess I mean, oh. everyone's saying Nick, so I'll go with Nick. Nick, Ooh. Antonio, who are you saying? Uh, I'm going Nick, yeah. Nick, who are you okay, saying? I'm going Antonio. 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 Instagram. I'm going Antonio. Like, wait, that's wait, wait, something I would, I would do, but it, I, I didn't say that. No, no I, I think it's like, Antonio. I think he has a secret, secret love for country music. <laughs> what does he share on Instagram? Was it, country, is it country music? top three music is? Yes. Antonio. Antonio, final answer. <laughs> Antonio. Good job. Hey, hey, hey. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> well done. That sounds right, like Sheila evil. will do one more. Okay. Um, it's Nick. It's, oh, yeah, it's going to have to be Nick now. <laughs> well, now it has to be Nick because Nick couldn't get one. <laughs> it's not fair. <laughs> I'm going to throw you for a loop. Or will right. I? I don't know. Okay. Uh, mm, I was an extra in a movie. That's true. Mm. That's Trevor. I feel like these things just happen to him. I feel like he's just always in the situation. I feel like Trevor, Trevor knows too many people and he does so <laughs> exactly. many things. That sounds exactly. like a Trevor thing. One of you two were in a movie and you didn't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> How did this remain? I'm telling you, I'm telling you right now. That's like Nick said. Like Trevor can randomly like disappear for two days and then send us a message and be like, I just did the coolest thing. <laughs> yeah, but did I do I'm that? Crazy. But yeah, I didn't see that. I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure you did that. You have contacts in this stuff. I'm sure. I'm sure. It's All right. So we're going to do the voting. It's we're going to do Nick. the voting. Antonio, who are you saying? Trevor, he's a bad actor. <laughs> Nick, who are you yeah, saying? I'm Trevor. I'm going Trevor. Trevor? Nick. Trevor, Nick. you're saying Nick? 100%. And the extra in the movie. Okay. Can you speak? <laughs> okay. Well done. <laughs> what movie? Explain. Explain. It was It was in, I don't know if you guys remember the movie, Le Canon Zapo Tudor. It, it, I remember you telling me this now. It, it was it was when you're in elementary school. Basically, yes, yes. everybody from our school, we went to the bell center and were just extras in the stands while they filmed one of the hockey That's scenes so on cool. the ice. That's awesome. Okay. 
I work okay. for them and I don't even get these opportunities. <laughs> the one thing that everybody will know about you now is you guys appeared on Serious and Silly with Scott and Sheila. That's there you all go. Need, you know. sure. Guys, if uh, need, sport man. marketing or students or anybody uh, wants to reach out to you guys, if anybody has any questions, how would they do that? What's the easiest way? Uh, easiest way would probably be um, Facebook. Uh, I'm assuming our names are going to be on the uh, description when you guys put it up. Yeah. So my name is the same thing as it is on Facebook. Nice. Yeah. I guess Facebook same. Is same, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> and if people want to get in contact with you, Scotty, for the game staff, I would they just mail you? Contact me at uh, sbarancaro at gmail. <laughs> <laughs> Mio Scott O'Brien, everybody. Um, thank you so much, everybody, for, for joining us today. You have been so fun, and uh, yeah, you're great. Um, if you guys want to keep following our Serious and Silly web series, please follow us on Tuesdays and Thursdays um, on our Champlain St. Lambert YouTube page. And uh, yeah, just thank you so much. You guys, fantastic. Thanks, guys. Thank you guys for having me.